Sorry, I have to do it again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, the scripture from St. Matthew, uh, chapter 4, um, starts off with, with, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit. What does then mean? It means right on the heels of him having been baptized by John the Baptist and the River Jordan. As soon as, as, as this occurs, uh, he, he begins his journey. Um, and he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So no one will think that the Spirit is different in the hierarchy after the Lord took his flesh and became incarnate. Wherever Jesus is, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father are also. Whenever one member of the Holy Trinity is present and manifest, the other two are there at the same time, at the same moment. They are inseparable. At the same time, they are three distinct persons. This is a mystery. But insofar as we know, um, all things take place through the Spirit of God for the benefit of man. Because it is by this Spirit, the Spirit of love and this this spirit of, 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 of real fatherhood, you see, everything is done, manifest in the Lord's incarnation, so that it would be a model for us, but yet to indwell in us all of these precious memories and all of these things so, so that we have an appreciation when we face our own struggle. Some people ask about struggle because fasting for some people is a great struggle. And, 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 and I remind you that there are some people that never struggle. They are never struggle. And I'm not talking about saints. I'm talking about wicked people. Wicked people who never fast. Wicked people who do the will of the devil. I'm talking about wicked people who always succeed. And they are the rulers of this world. And what did the Lord say about them? They have nothing in me. They don't, they, don't, they don't worry about anything. I could name names right now. i got a whole list of names I want to tell you that belong to the devil. I won't do that for political reasons. <laughs> but they don't suffer. We suffer. But they will suffer. It's like the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man had every good thing. The whole city cried upon his death. The funeral was great. Everybody was arrayed. Everybody saluted his dignity. And then, on the other side of life, in the real life, he begged Father Abraham to let his servant, Lazarus, touch his finger in the water and press it against his lips so that he might be just a bit relieved. Ah, how things change. The problem with people who have trouble fasting is that they do not see, and this is the deepest meaning of the word, to see. Because if you see, you know that there's more than the, just this plane of existence. There's more than this physical life. There's more. But if you don't see that, you, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm speaking foolishness, aren't I? You're saying... What did the Jews say? What did the Jews want from the Lord Jesus Christ? Show us a miracle and it sufficeth us. No, one miracle will never be sufficient. I don't care how many things you say. If you are one of those people that do not see into the, the eternity, right? Why do I love icons so much? You know, an icon is a, is a mysterious thing, isn't it? It's a thing that you can look at and you can see an image, but if you wish, you can look through the image and you can see the historicity of the saint or of the depiction of the event. You can see also what happened as a manifestation of those who witnessed that and who carry it forward in their faith, even to us in our generation. You can see the essence of of God working amongst his people out of the, 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 the abundance of his love. You can see all these things if you can see. You know, I, I was looking at my, uh, the windshield of my car today when I got into it, and it was, 
there was dew on the windshield and I couldn't see. And, and I, I, I turned on, on the, the sprinkler for the car to, to sprinkle the windshield and, and then the, the windshield wipers to, to clear a path. Now, I could still see when there, was, when there was dew on the windshield, but I couldn't see distinctly. It would have been dangerous for me to drive, but I could see out of it. If somebody appeared in front of my car walking and the car were parked, I, I wouldn't not be able to see that person walking. I would see it. So why am I telling you this? Because some people see as though they had very thick cataracts. <laughs> And just a little light gets through. That's about your soul. Your soul. If you see just a little bit, you can work on it. But you can still see, so don't give up hope. Because the thing that you see through that window is real. And not only is it real, but there is more. And you are just limited by the amount of light that will go through that windshield, that will allow you to see as it bounces off the objects in front and coming back to you, the clarity that all of heaven is uh, abundantly bathing in, that light from God, that light that enlightens every man that comes into the world, that light, the true light. All right, now... The devil didn't realize that Jesus Christ was God when he saw him in his nativity. <laughs> Lucifer, the name Lucifer means bearer of the light. And Jesus Christ is the light. God is the light. And we say about the light, light from light, true God from true God. Right? Nur min nur, elehak min alehak. Right? You understand? It's the true light. He saw him in his glory. So now he sees him in a manger. The king of glory is in a manger. No, -uh. can't be. And the devil is flummoxed. Here again, Jesus comes to be baptized. And what happens? The heavens open up. The heavens open up. And a dove, a dove alights over the head of of the Lord, and a voice from heaven is heard, certainly by the devil, saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then Jesus is tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights, and it says, after he was a hungered, when the devil saw the incarnate logos hungry, he said, how can this be? He has no need to eat. He has no need to sleep. Neither do I. The devil doesn't eat. The devil doesn't sleep. The devil doesn't rest. How is he hungry? And so he asked him twice, if thou be the son of God. Now in Matthew it says, command these stones be made bread. In Luke it says, command this stone. But it doesn't matter whether it's these stones or this stone. One of the um, fathers of the church in their meditation, they said uh, that uh, the stones, and they would have to have been river stones. Now imagine this. You're in a desert, but being in a desert or a deserted place does not mean a place where water had not previously been. We have what are called in our desert in Southern California, arroyos. And arroyos are desert. And then it rains. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, if you are camping in an arroyo, you are now surfing down the arroyo with all of your tent and all of your stuff because this has become a river. Yeah? So these had to be river rocks. Why am I saying this? And why is this? Because the river rock was flat and round and smooth and it looked like bread. So in the hungry state, the devil asks, let this be. What did the Lord say? Actually, he's repeating Moses. Moses is the one who said this in Deuteronomy. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. The devil goes, oh, okay. I'll tell you what. 
I'm going to take you up on a pinnacle of the temple. And if you are the son of God, remember, he's still not convinced that Jesus is the son of God. If you are the son of God, again, he asks him, on the basis of what scripture is said about you, throw yourself down, because it is written that the angels will bear you up lest you would at any time dash your foot against a stone. I mean, you will not stub your toe. You can't be hurt because you're the son of God. Aren't you? Didn't know. The devil did not know. The devil was, the devil was also confused at the resurrection, but that's another story six weeks from now. But I'm telling you these things because the first temptation is the temptation of the belly. And by belly, we don't mean, I just want to eat. It means, for men today, it means pornography. The belly of the man is his sexual appetite that is assuaged through pornography available on his phone and on the internet. And this really attacks men. Not women so much. Some women, but 90% men, 10% women. The belly also means what? Uh, African American people call it bling. You know? I want, I want bling. I want jewelry. I want a big watch. I mean a big watch. I remember seeing a watch on some guy's hand and, 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 and looking at it, I thought, this thing has got to weigh a pound. <laughs> It used to be in my day that the most expensive watch was the thinnest watch. But this watch was about a half inch thick. And it was solid gold. And it, I mean, it was, uh, I don't know how much it cost, maybe $100,000. It was a lot of money. But they like this stuff. This is the belly. This is the belly. The, the fine clothes. There's this preacher that I watch sometimes. His name is T.D. Jakes. Bishop T.D. Jakes, he calls himself, or, or the church to which he belongs calls him. This guy wears $7,000 suits if they're a dime. He is a really huge fat man, really, really big, as fat as anybody you've ever seen. And his clothes fit perfectly, perfectly. I mean, it looks like his clothes were tailored by... This is the belly. This is what... This is what, you may not be tempted by food. There are a lot of people um, who admire veganism, and, and it's not troubling for them to, 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 to eat that kind of uh, diet continuously. I knew a woman, she was married um, uh, to a folk singer um, who had passed away. Uh, I can't think of the name of the guy right now. But he had this song called, uh, Everybody's Talking at Me, I Can't Hear Oh. Harry Nelson. That's the guy. What, say it again? Harry Nelson. Harry Nelson. N Nielsen, I think. Nielsen. N-I-L-S-S-O-N. -S -S it was in our church. And she never, she never eats except a vegan diet. And I told her, well, you're, you're a cop now. I said, you've got to eat. She mar after he died, she married an Egyptian guy. Okay, this is at St. George Church. And I said, you have to eat. And I said, but you don't have to eat much. To break your fast means you can take a, a, a teaspoonful of yogurt. You could have the, the white of an egg. You could take a sip of milk. That is breaking your fast. If you are cheating and you're going around and saying, oh, well, I'll, I'll just have this piece of cheese, or I'll just have this, you know, there was one woman one time told me that in her, in, 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 in her coffee in the morning, she had to have milk. You know, I wanted to hit her upside the head. Um, I, I did that, spiritually speaking. I said, what about cream aura? Or what about one of these things, that they, they, the, the artificial stuff that they put in? And, oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't taste the same. I said, this is, I said, do you ever hear about uh, uh, Esau? <laughs> Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated? You know, read that passage. Read that over and then think about milk and coffee in the morning of a fast. But she comes and she asks for this permission. Perfect health. A young woman, you know, in her 30s. So um, the belly is, is terrible. The second thing is about vainglory. The, 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 
The question really here is, if these things that are said about you in Scripture are true, manifest them. And, and the Lord says, manifest them how? Manifest them how? The devil wants to throw you down. That's the symbol of being on the pinnacle of the temple and thrust yourself down. No, no, no. He, if, if he's God, why didn't the devil say, lift up the temple or, or something else that was another manifestation of his godhood or godhead? But he didn't. It was destruction. Destroy yourself. If, if you can't destroy yourself, then I'll know you're God. And the Lord said to him, you do not tempt the Lord your God. You do not do this. So then the last temptation came. This last temptation, he said, if you will just bow down and worship me, I will give you all of what I am now going to let you see. And, and, and well, because God is God, meaning Jesus is God, in an instant of time, he could see the whole world and all of its glory. And the, the devil said, all this I will give to you. Well, first of all, the devil can't give what isn't his. And he sure the heck doesn't own me. And I know there were people in this time that he did not own. So how can he say that he will give the Lord all these things? It's a lie. And of course, the Lord said, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. Why? Because it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And after that, the devil couldn't do much. He, he tried with everything. All of the other things that ail mankind, all of the things that are, that are your sins, and my sins. All of these sins are subsumed under these three categories. You, you, you either have a kind of, you know, materialistic kind of relationship to creation. I want, I want, I want, and it's all for the glorification of the body or feeding the body, taking care of the body, the body, the body, right? Or it's about what? The next temptation was that man was going to uh, be not what God was content in having given him, be content with what God had given him, but rather would be somebody who is pushing for more and more authority, for pushing for more and more glory, for wanting recognition. Recognition can be as, as small a thing as a child who is bursting out of their seat trying to get attention, the attention of the teacher, so they can ask a question. I remember seeing one time in, in a movie. Hasn't this happened in your experience in school? I, I remember there, there were times, you know, when, you know, I, I was just... I was just hoping that the teacher would find me invisible. I didn't know a thing. I didn't do the assignment. I didn't read the book. I had no idea. And when somebody else was straining so that their hand was almost pulling their arm out of the socket of their shoulder, right? I was so thankful. But for that individual that's doing that, what does it tell you? It tells you that they're not getting enough recognition in their own life, that they have a hunger for recognition, that this hunger for recognition is something that could possibly, if it continues to grow, take them into a place that is terrible because they want more and more. It, it was written about the uh, actress um, Judy Garland, actress and singer, that she could just never be loved enough. No matter how many men loved her, no matter the acclaim of her fans, no matter how many accolades from her peers she received, she was always chronically depressed about herself. How could that be? How could that be? Because this hunger is insatiable. It's a fire. And the problem with a fire is every time you feed it a little bit, it grows. 
You have a fire, it's this big. You just tip something over into it, it gets bigger. And, 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 and this fire, this fire that burns, it demands. It, 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 it makes impingements upon the direction that you would take yourself and says, feed me, feed me, feed me, like little Audrey. Little shop of horrors. So, so I have to throw things in like that to keep some people awake. I'm sorry for you, those of you who are listening to this. But when we, when we learn that the power that we have is a gift, when we learn that, we don't have to go around all the time striving to get recognition, striving to be in the first place. You know, I, I, was, I was looking... If you go through the history of the last 10 years, some of you, you know, collect these magazines and things like that. See where the Pope is, or, or, or not the Pope so much, because he doesn't come here very often. But, but see where Ambassarapian is. Look and see what priest is always standing next to him. Always. In other words, if there's, if there's his head, then you're going to see the other guy's head over here, or you're going to see it over here. And you're going to see it all the time. Go back 10 years and look at all the pictures that you can find. And there'll be a guy that you can pick out and say, oh, now you know something about him. Now you know the desire for this person to be next to the ruler of our diocese. It's not me saying it. It's something that you can visually, visually ascertain simply by looking at the pictures. Who is where? And, 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 and there is this spirit that invades some people because they think that by means of their celebrity, they're going to be able to control things that happen. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing. The last thing, of course, is that, that you know, when, when you have a, a desire for, for just more, just more, whatever it is, just the desire for more is wrong. You know, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, there's a, to break down the Greek is difficult, but give us this day the bread that is sufficient for us. That's the literal translation. Give us this day the bread that is sufficient for us. Not extra. Just like the manna in the wilderness. The people tried to collect manna in, a, in, in an amount that was greater than what they had need of. And when they came the next day to look at the manna, it was full of mold. It had decayed. So in our meditation, we say, give us this day our daily bread. And some people meditate the bread that we really want is the bread that we are going to eat with God in heaven. So give us this day the morrow's bread. It means I don't want just bread for the day. I want it for tomorrow too. No, no. The tomorrow I'm talking about is the tomorrow when we eat with the Lord himself and everybody. You see? So we have these meditations. But the real Greek meaning is give us this day the bread that is sufficient for us. It is a sin to want. It is a sin to want. Not to be in want. That means you're in poverty. That means you're poor. But it is a sin to want. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. I'm talking about wanting things for oneself. You may want something for someone else. And that's okay. That's a generosity. And believe me, if you have an abundance that you are to give to that person, not just say, hey, God, give to that person. No, no, no. The Lord will say, excuse me, why do you think it is that you have what you have? You know, when the devil met Job, the devil was really flummoxed because he was a guy that was comfortable with wealth. Job, Job was, had more flocks more kids, I mean, he had everything more, more lands, he had everything. 
And then piece by piece it was all taken from him, even to the extent of his health. And he's still blessed. He still, he still said what? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right? Good old Job. He was comfortable. The devil couldn't do this with him. But for most of mankind, it's just the opposite. We want and we want and we want. You know? And the Lord says, no. Ask for what you need. If you are praying for something that you want, it's likely you'll never receive it. If you're praying for something that you need, the likelihood is is that you're going to get it. And it will be at the Lord's choosing because he will know the time that is most appropriate. But you will get it if it is something that you need. So... um, you pray for me, I'll pray for you, and we hope that the, uh, the fast uh, is something that we can learn from in terms of our own humility and in the exercise of our obedience, carry it further into other areas. Glory be to our God, both now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen.